Welcome to Friesen's online tutorial series. My name is Catherine and today I'm going to show you how to create a layout using some basic design principles. We've started with elements that we've created using a previous tutorial, um, tools for creating a simple layout. We have some pictures and we have some text that we've changed using our character styles. We've also started with our basic two-page template that we've added four columns, two on each page, and our page numbers. So before we start placing any of our elements on the page, we're going to add some guides that will help us create our layout. And the first one that we're going to add is what we call an eye line. And to add an eye line, we're going to just press and hold down control, and then click on our ruler and drag down a guide. And we want to place our eye line not through the center of both pages, but a little above or a little below the center line. And we're just going to drag down another guide so that we have a consistent one pica spacing between our guides. Now we create an eye line to give the eye a place to travel across both pages and we can set our pictures on top of this or line them up to the bottom one. The next thing I'm going to add to this layout is something that we will delete after we're done placing the rest of the elements and it's called a circle of interest. So I'm just going to go over to our toolbar and choose the ellipse tool and then drag out a large oval over both pages. And this gives something for you to guide, to set your pictures on. And we want to set all of our pictures to the middle of this oval or touching the edge of the oval. And when we place our text, it should be touching the oval or on the outside of the oval. You should never place a block of text directly in the middle of your two pages. Now the first element that we're going to add to our layout is what we call a dominant photo and it is going to be the biggest photo on both pages over all the rest of them. And so we're going to take our dominant photo and we're just going to bring it onto our page and we're going to line it up at a starting point with one of our margins. And now you can see here that it doesn't touch our eye line or touch our next column. And we want it to. We want to give um, this picture sort of like a bounding or a boundary that it goes to. It's something that we're going to line all of the rest of our pictures up to and our text. So we want it to fit within the boundaries. And so for our outside box, you can just click and drag it out. And then for our picture, we need to go on our direct selection tool and click on the picture. And then before we drag, we want to press and hold down the shift key and then drag out our picture just a little bit bigger than our outside box. And there we have our dominant photo and it spans over four columns and over the gutter line. And what you need to remember for your gutter line is that when you're placing a photo is that you don't want the center of interest in your photo or someone's head to land in this area as it will end up in the spine when the book is bound. So we're going to go ahead and start placing the rest of our photos around the dominant photo, keeping in mind that we want it to be on the inside of this oval. And what we want to keep in mind when we're placing our photos is that we want to place our photos so that they are facing in towards the gutter. We don't ever want to place a photo, say here, where the subject in the photo is looking off the page. A better place for this photo would be down in this corner. So as you can see, the people in this photo are facing inwards and the people in this photo are facing inwards. We're going to add our last photo right here. And she is also turned inwards. Now we're going to start placing our text and we're going to start with the biggest body of text that we have and we're going to place it right here. Now, instead of having text that goes across two columns, I'm going to show you an easy way to break it up so you have two columns of text, which makes it easier to read. So we're just going to resize the one 
so that it fits within our column. And you'll notice this red cross in a box that's been created. This just lets you know that there's more text than what's being shown in the box. And so we're just going to click on this and we're going to load our cursor with the rest of the text. And now we can just click on a spot and it will create a new text box with that remaining text in it. And so now we can just resize this box and we can move it over into position, lining it up with that one. And there we have our text broken up into two columns. We're going to add a headline on top of this. And remember when you're placing text and other elements that you want to be aware that you keep the vertical as well as the horizontal spacing consistent one pica. And you can always drag down more guides to help you line this up. The next thing we're going to place is our captions. And when you're placing captions or your block of text or your headline, you want to remember that instead of placing, you know, a caption here or let's say a caption down here, is we want to push this white space out to the corners. So to do that, we just pull in our elements, in this case, our captions, which pushes the white space to the outside of the page. And we're going to place our next two captions. And you may be wondering why I didn't place a caption here to go with this photo. And the reason I didn't do that is because we have a big block of text here and I don't want the caption getting lost in this block of text. So I placed it over here. Now you can either label your text with saying picture bottom right, but your caption should actually say enough information so that when the uh, reader of the book reads the caption is that they should be able to associate this caption with this picture without aid of numbers or having to label it as bottom right photo. So now that we've placed all of our elements, we're going to delete our guides. And what you can do is you can actually go to your preview button and see what your page is going to look like without any guidelines on it. You can see that we have all of our heavy, solid photos towards the middle. All of our text is on the outside of this photo. And even further than that, all of our white space has been pushed to the outside. We have now completed building a layout using some basic design tools. And if you want to add some more advanced elements or learn some more advanced design tools, please continue on to our next tutorials.